Hello, welcome to another video from Mayan Technologies. Today, we'll be reviewing how basic navigation works in Kinetic. As we can see, the first thing to change is our home screen. In this area right here, we can start adding those shortcuts that are most useful to us. We'll do this by clicking on the button located in this part of the screen and selecting the Edit option. Here we can identify which widgets we want to add to this area, which is very useful to make accessing them easier. Once we've added or modified this personalization, we'll click on Save. The next thing that's different is that now we have our toolbar located on the left side of the screen. The first button we can identify is this one here. This is where we can check and change which company we're in, the site or workstation, as well as the language. These fields can only be modified if we're on the home screen. Our next button is this one here. This is where we can view all the notifications the system gives us and we'll also have access to the system monitor. If we click, we'll see all the reports that have been run as well as our active tasks in case we're running a report or process, our history tasks of all the processes and reports that have been executed and also if our company has schedule tasks. Next, we'll have this icon here. This is a feature Epicor offers us, which provides information that can be useful for reviewing how each Epicor screen works. We have videos, articles, and we can also access our field level help. I'll show you an example of that shortly. Then we have this icon here, which is where we can view the menus that Epicor offers us whether for each department, each module, and just like an Epicor Classic, we have the option to view, depending on each module, what the menu path is. And likewise, we'll see the division depending on the module we're in, like setup, general operations, and in some cases, reports. Next, I'd like to show you the screen for purchase orders. We'll use this screen as a reference. The first thing we'll notice is that when opening this screen, Instead of Epicor showing us a blank record, we see a grid. In this grid, we'll be able to see all the records that exist for the type of screen we're in. In this case, we're in purchase order entry. So we'll be able to see all the purchase orders that have been created in the system. We can see that this grid is organized in columns showing basic information about each purchase order. This is very useful because often we only want to check one detail about a PO, so we don't have to go into the specific record. We can check that information right here. Another very useful feature is that Epicor now lets us easily organize or personalize the columns shown in this area. We'll do this by clicking this button and selecting Personalize Columns. All the options shown here and that are enabled are the columns Epicor is already displaying. Those that are grayed out are ones we can add to also be shown here. For example, if I want to see who approved each purchase order, I would turn on that option and click Save. Now I click to the right and I can see that the new column has been added. This is very useful because another feature Epicor offers is that if I click that same button again, I have the option to copy or export all the grid data to Excel. This is very helpful because in the previous version of Epicor, we often had to do a BAQ to get this information from the database. Now we can do it directly. Another feature offered in this new version of Epicor is the ability to filter depending on the screen we're in by different statuses. For example, we can see all POs that exist, all approved, closed, open, pending, rejected. This also helps a lot when we want to download this info into Excel. We can filter it directly here and the grid will show only that filtered info. Now, if we know the exact number of the record we want to open, we can do it right here. That is, if I want to open P04258, I just type the number, press tab, and the system opens it. Here we have our record. Let's go back. Another way to access these orders is by clicking this link here. As you'll see, if I hover my cursor over each record, it appears as a link. If I click it, the record will open. We also have the option to do specific searches. 
That is, if I click on the magnifying glass, I can do searches filtering by different statuses or classifications. If I want to search by a specific buyer, type of order, or maybe status, I can do that and it will show the results here. The last thing to know about this screen is that we can also do simpler filtering. In the previous version of Kinetic, we had to right click and select the filter option. With this new version, we just click directly on the filter option and we get a filter for each column. And in this version, we also have the ability to choose how we want to filter the data. We can choose to show values that are equal to, not equal to, and as you can see, we have several options, which is very useful whenever we want to search for something. Another change is that the creation of a new record on this screen is now indicated by this icon here, instead of being located where it was before, around this area. If we click this button, the system will generate a new record and we can begin creating. Let's go back so I can show you an existing record and you can see how the information is now displayed. The changes in this version of Kinetic don't affect the processes themselves, only the layout of how the information is displayed. We can now see that the information is displayed vertically in what we call cards, these blue blocks here. If we scroll down, we can see the same information from the same sections we had in classic tabs horizontally, but now in vertical cards. The grouping in each card is the same, or very similar, to what we had in classic, so finding fields won't be difficult. Remember I mentioned we have the option Help and Support Center and then enable the Display Level Help? If we turn that on, we'll see that next to the name of our field, we'll get this icon. If we click that icon, Epicor will display information about what that field does, its main function, which is also very useful when we're unsure about the type of data to enter in a field. So we can check it right there. Another change is that we now have several ways to access specific records, like, in this case, a line item. If I scroll down, I'll see the list of lines for this specific record. Here, I can also add information or make changes. Or, if I want to view it more clearly, remember that if we see a number or word in blue, and when we hover over it looks like a link, we can click it, and the system will take us to see more details about what we selected. Likewise, we can do that if I go back to my main screen in this tree here. This tree shows how deep we're navigating in the record. For example, if I want to go back to view the line detail, I'll select this option and my screen will show it again. Another useful feature is that in this area, we'll see general information about the record we're viewing. In this case, since we're in purchase order, we'll see the PO number that's open, which line I'm on, the PO status, the date, whether it includes taxes, the order total, and the currency. The next change is that now in this area is where we have the options to save, refresh, search, add a memo, review the change log, or if we want to print. And finally, in this area, we'll find the options we had enabled for the kinetic version in activities. As you'll notice, the process hasn't changed. Only improvements Epicor has made to speed up what's going on behind the scenes and help us navigate more easily. I hope this video has been very useful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a like.